happy Friday! It's time for Mitchell's Movie Minute with our own movie buff here. This is Julian Mitchell. We skipped last week. I we think did. we were gone or something. We, we were both gone. I think we both... Somewhere. Yeah. Oh, it was the right before the holiday weekend, and mm -hmm. so we didn't have Movie Minute. And so we have a few movies to get to today. Yes, we have a few movies. We have a couple of the summer blockbusters. We're getting to that time of year here. Uh, one kind of little indie-ish, smaller film, mm -hmm. uh, but some big ones on the docket today. Okay, what's first? Let's start here with You Hurt My Feelings. Now, this is a new film from director Nicole Hall of Center, starring Julia Louis-Dreyfus. The premise of this film is Louis-Dreyfus plays Beth, a novelist whose memoir has been out, it's doing okay, and is now trying to publish a fiction novel. One day, she overhears her husband telling his friend that he doesn't like her book, and it upends their marriage. This is a really small, cute, slice-of-life film that is all just about the little white lies we tell each other, <laughs> whether it's cool to just be fully honest, or do you need to tell some of those lies and what it feels like when you find out that those little white lies have been told. It's really funny. The writing's pretty good. I thought it was okay. It wasn't necessarily my cup of tea, um, but I enjoyed it. This is kind of movies that I do really like seeing in theaters and want people to see more of. It's cool, it's fun, enjoyable. it's breezy, enjoyable. And I think for a lot of people, I think for me too, I'm obviously not in a long-standing marriage. Um, but if you're in one, I think this is a really cool and interesting movie to kind of go sure. and see. Sure, yeah. Because I'm sure we've, I mean, we've all told those little white lies. Right, you might know? make you smirk a time or two throughout the movie. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and if you love Julia Louis-Dreyfus, I mean, is she's a great she, Because she was in another movie that you recently had reviewed, the one with Jonah Hill. Wasn't she like the parent? You people. You yeah, people. you people. Yes, yes, that's right. She, she did was in that. I'm like, oh, now she's in this. Okay, so she's. Uh, yeah, she's popping up in a few she's things. Popping up in a few things. Nice, few things. nice. All right. Um, I am a huge <laughs> Fast and Furious fan. Okay. And I haven't seen Fast Ten or Fast X mm -hmm. yet. That's yes. what's up next. That's what's up next. Okay. We're just gonna we'll go into it. I this have is... heard one review from someone else in the newsroom. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, so we'll go, we'll go into it. This is the latest entry in the Fast and Furious saga. <laughs> because it never ends. It, it never ends. Family, one last ride. It's always another. <laughs> They're at the table. There they are. <laughs> always. Corona's only. Once again, this movie follows Dom and the Fast family battling against Jason Momoa's Dante. He's new in this franchise. Who actually, oh, he's in here now? He's in here now. And he's actually the son of the villain in Fast Five. So this movie begins oh. with basically kind of reshoots putting Jason Momoa into the ending It already of sounds Fast amazing. Five. Sounds amazing, Julian. Are you kidding? Oh, whatever. Jason Momoa, he comes <laughs> back for revenge. Look, I'm going to be simple here. This movie's not good. It makes absolutely no sense. It's ridiculous. I will say, Jason Momoa is having so much fun. He, he plays like a really funny clown villain. And it's great. He's having a great time. His nails are painted. He's got the purple, pinks, all types of colors on. But the movie makes no sense. The movie's okay. ridiculous. Like, I think at this point, if you're going back in your old movies and changing them to now make new plots for new movies, uh -huh. yeah. you're off the rails. Mm -hmm. Will I still see two and three that Mr. Vin Diesel says is coming after this? Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. I yeah. will, which is sad. But here we are. We're still at the theaters watching. I love it. Well, because I... You're a big fan of Too Fast, Too Furious. I started rewatching the saga mm -hmm. after seeing this movie. So I was like, where did things go wrong here? Where did we fall off? I think it was when they were on that runway and it never ended. Was that the sixth one or the seventh I, one? That's the thing. I, can, you, can you even remember? Or even in Fast Five when they're pulling the safes, it got a bit ridiculous. But that movie's great. That it scene is. is great. That is a good one. And Nick at Sports and Guy were talking about it in the car, and it's like once, unfortunately, obviously Paul Walker passed and, and Brian left the series, it's like they just started going, okay, Vin Diesel, someone has to match him. And first it was it was, it was was John Cena, it was Jason Momoa, it's Dwayne The Rock Johnson, mm -hmm. Jason Statham. Mm -hmm. We're doing too much. Mm -hmm. they're, they're Marvel characters. But if you want to see it, it's out now, even though Julian says it's not no. good. But... See, see the other movies I have on this list. No, okay, okay. Sense. Next up. <laughs> Next here, I just saw this this morning, so I'm sorry if I'm all over the place talking about it, but it's Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, sequel to 2018's Into the Spider-Verse, one of my favorite movies of all time. Picks up a little over a year after the first one. Miles has been Spider-Man for a bit here. And Gwen, who's in the last movie, comes back. She's joined a team of spider people set on saving the multiverse. How that team goes about doing it doesn't work for Miles. So he's going head to head with the other spiders to save everything. Okay. This movie is absolutely incredible. Five stars. I tweeted out 12 out of 10. Nice. No notes. It is, I mean, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan since like birth. I have a picture of me 
at a birthday party with a little Spider-Man on my cake and I have a Spider-Man t-shirt on. Like, this is my favorite superhero and this movie was a perfect celebration showing of what makes this character You special. saw this in theaters this morning? I saw this in IMAX. Okay. See on the biggest screen you can. Okay. It's visually stunning. The animation pops. It is, it, it's incredible. So a little better than the last movie you reviewed. So much better than the last movie. So see Fast X on a smaller screen and then see this on a big screen. Sure, I'm sure. Kidding. Fast X, Fast X isn't good. But Spider-Man movie is uh, PG? Uh, yes, like, PG, PG-13, I think. Kids, I, I it's okay yeah, for kids? It's, oh, yeah. Okay. okay. And another movie, okay for kids, we actually have a special guest coming in yes, for this review. Yes, we do. This is The Little Mermaid, which sadly I haven't seen, but no fear. Oh, Cammie, I wore tennis shoes. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got shorts on. I only get mad at Nick. Okay, I'll just, um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so The Little Mermaid is out. Yes. And you saw it with Lexi. I did see it. Took uh, my three and a half year old to go. Check your mic. I think your mic is off. I'm saying our second. mic is off. Okay. Are you new to the yeah. studio? I'm new. I have such <laughs> giant camera fright. Um, so yeah, so I went to see The Little Mermaid with my three and a half year old Lexi. The movie is about two and a half hours long and okay. it's pretty, pretty true to what you remember seeing uh, way back when. But of course we have a fresh spin with, you know, the, the more realistic uh, looking animals. A lot of people hating on how Flounder looks. Okay. Um, but of course it's voiced by Drake, Jacob Tremblay, so mm -hmm. precious. Uh, loved, loved Hallie as Ariel, of course. The scenes are the setting, beautiful. Um, my only, only cr uh, criticism, Lexi and my favorite line in the original Little Mermaid is after Ursula explodes the eels, she goes, oh, my poor little poopsies. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. I remember that. It's not in there. Not in There's there. no poopsies. Interesting. Um, so Lexi looked over at me and she was like, what? I'm like, I know. <laughs> um, but no, we loved it. I wonder why it. they took that out. I can't wait to see it again. I can't wait. Should we watch the old one and then this one? Um, I feel I, like I need to reverse my, I need to watch the old I Little think, Mermaid. I think, yeah, now. get the background. And also, yeah. if you liked the first Little Mermaid, there's a special little nod to the original Ariel as well that Hallie oh. has a little moment with in the new one oh. that I think you'll enjoy. Yeah. Okay. How would you rank this in the Disney live actions? Have you seen some other ones of those? My favorite. Your favorite? Really? Ian, Ian, my husband, still goes with Lion King. I like this one. I think we have a picture of Miss Lexi at the movie theater. There, there she, she is, is. dressed up, ready to watch The Little Mermaid. She stayed awake and was watching the whole time? She was awake the whole time, conveniently had to go to the bathroom during the shark part. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but that was well timed. Otherwise, we had no, <laughs> no issues. And then, Julian, you have that. some family members that have been. Yes, my the husband saw this, what? and I wanted to show this picture. Um, my mom sent this in our family group chat. I wanted to show this picture, as, as Caitlin said, Hallie's in this movie, and how much representation really matters, and how yeah. cute it was to, to my this picture. My heart. Though. The Little Mermaid in theaters today. You can check it out. Thank you two both for being here. Oh, of Appreciate course. it. No. Such Caitlin's an expert. Such an expert. You did great. <laughs> you did great. Uh, more on Midwest Access when we come back.